Welcome to Top Tables, where I'll showcase various EV tournament experiences within Toronto and even beyond the city as I prepare for big events such as regionals, YCS, and NAWCQ. Hey guys, so we're back at it with another vlog and this one's going to be a fun one because we do have the Niagara Falls regionals happening this weekend. Now for vlog purposes, regional level events and higher, it's a little bit tricky to do because you're actually not allowed to record any of your gameplay matches uh, and quite frankly, I don't think you're allowed to record at all within the venue uh, while the regional level events are actually happening. So you know, given those restrictions, I'm going to try my best to piece together a story for this vlog. Anyways, Niagara Regionals is always really fun because, you know, I take a few of my friends, I drive them down there, we have a great time playing Yu-Gi-Oh! And then we have a nice little meal and then just drive back home. Now, as for myself, admittedly, I haven't had as much time as I'd like to test uh, during this Phantom Nightmare format. I've been pretty busy with work and, you know, whatever free time I have, then, you know, I want to prioritize creating content uh, for this channel rather than play testing, for example. So, you know, I'm going to have to freestyle a little bit at this Regionals, but, you know, nonetheless, uh, we do have some time now to get some practice in, so let's just hop on a Yu-Gi-Oh! simulator. Alright, well, let's just see what the meta is looking like right now. Okay, well, first of all, let's just update our deck list, because I have not done this in 15 years. Alright, Dark Horror Gucky, uh, pretty bad this format right now, I think. Uh, you know, Fire King stuff. Ooh, Jinzo against Labyrinth, that's a pretty good... And we have Obelisk Slifer. Honestly, I might keep that in my brand list, shouldn't I? Oh, that's banned. Uh oh. All right. Well, let's just go against this guy and uh, see what the meta's looking. All right, forty versus forty. Gotta love to see it. I did not open any hand traps. I don't play any. Easy. Okay. Well, that didn't help at all. So let's just hop on Dueling Book because surely that will be much better. You know what? Scrap that. I think I'm just gonna go watch some TV instead. Uh, my wife and I have been watching The Bear recently, a really good show about like a restaurant and I mean a lot more than that, but you know, I do highly recommend. Anyways, this is a branded Despair list that I'll be taking to Niagara Regionals. Basically, I decided to max out on the Thrust uh, just and take out a Talent actually because that card has been always kind of hit and miss for me uh, in terms of branded Despia specifically. Uh, Lulu in the extra deck is really arguably the most cuttable one for sure. I do find that, you know, in a Nadir Servant Maximus situation, sometimes you do really do need that direct access to Cartesia, which you get through Lulu for that gimmick lock. Dragoon, also arguable to cut. A lot of lists have cutting it as well. Uh, for me personally, I just feel like maybe Maybe since like just like my cyber dragon days i've been playing <laughs> dragoon since then it's just been like my ace boss monster so i really just like playing it uh but i do find that it has definitely come up a lot for me anyways let's just get a good night's rest and get ready for regionals tomorrow morning What's your favorite thing about regionals? Uh, probably the elevated competition. Uh, pull day Yu-Gi-Oh! and hang out with my buds, for uh -huh. sure. Yeah. Hang out with friends? I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. Going X3 and having fun. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't sound like fun. <laughs> the people. Just the friends you make along the way. Uh, just playing my favorite cards. Uh, definitely seeing everyone coming out and predicting the meta, but I'm just losing to flu every regional. <laughs> uh, besides normal summoning Rubina, it's probably hanging out with friends. We all know that I do stuff casually competitive, and regionals is like the perfect time for me to like put in practice stuff that I'm goofing around with. And so I love being able to go with my friends to events that we have to take seriously and be as goofy as possible while taking it seriously. All right, we just finished round three. Miguel, your XO, this guy beat me first round. He's walking back home. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, how you? 
X1 right now. Yeah, that's pretty good. You pretty haven't played good. in a while? Yeah. On my way to X3. Uh, X2 right, right now. I'm X1 after three rounds. Let's go. What's your record? Playing actual deck? Uh, X0. What are you playing? Raid Raptors. Oh, oh man. Toronto Raid Raptors. Raptors. <laughs> Okay, so as alluded to in that clip, I am paired against my good friend Miguel, round one of all people, 211 players, uh, you know, eight rounds of Swiss, uh, top 32 will get invited, so, you know, we couldn't believe it, but uh, unfortunately, I do lose the Daryl, which is very critical in this matchup against Hero, and that's because uh, they can put out Dark Angel, which is uh, very deadly against Branded, basically, you know, I just can't play spells, not to mention they have Dark Law, which is like a macro cosmos, and, you know, you also have something like DP Pop, which can really, really mess things up as you try to get around the Dark Angel lock as well. So, you know, game one, needless to say, I just completely lost really fast. Game two, I was able to gimmick lock, uh, won that. And game three, you know, again, just Dark Angel. And on top of that, like Ash, Droll, uh, DD Crow, like no way I'm winning that. So I do get cooked by Miguel round one. Round two, I am paired with another friend in Neil. This is actually a branded mirror. Uh, luckily, I win the Daryl this time. Again, just kind of common theme, gimmick lock game one. I kind of take that pretty easily. Game two, unfortunately, so he has... Uh, he activates loss, sets three passes. Not conventional for Branded Despia. Uh, and I just happened to start with a Feather Duster. Uh, crazy. So I just blew him out. I felt really bad. Uh, but you know what? Uh, after the game, we saw like the sets were Fusion Duplication, Super Poly, and also Summon Limit. And he, of course, he has the uh, Branded Loss Hub, which without Feather Duster, or let's say evenly, that really would have taken the mirror uh, right away. Really, really strong. And so round three, before we had our lunch break, it was against Voiceless Voice. Uh, again, I am fortunate to win the die roll. I actually get Ash on the Brand Diffusion, but I open Thrust as well as Nadir Servant. So really, I only needed one of those two to still gimmick lock. I take that very easily. Game two, I draw him. He just sets like two passes. He does have summon limit, but you know, I'm still in a pretty good position with like Sanctifier, for example. And I just kind of, uh, you know, poke damage and eventually take it from there. Anyways, we did have this lunch break, so I just decided to go around and ask people what one card change they would make on the next ban list. Ban one card on the list, what would it be? I'll be on the Sanctifier Dragon. Whoa! Gotta go, gotta go. <laughs> I, I mean, you can't be gimmick pop, pop locking me like that. It's just... This is the most based ABC player. I would bring back Union Care and make it for Union Monsters only. When uh, anticipating Striker uh, Camilla, I want to gauge to three. Uh, Naturina, Sacred Tree to three. I think the Runic cards need to be hit, and I think the Destroyer cards are cool, and I, there's more hybrids to explore, so I like those cards back. You want to tell them about your YouTube channel? Uh, shout out to Seto Yu Gi Oh! Make sure you check it out. I don't like shout it out myself, but yeah, go uh, check it out. <laughs> definitely Dimension Shifter. Screw that card. Ban Shifter. And subscribe to GG by <laughs> Shifters gotta get banned. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Oh, I don't have one yet. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so back to action, and we are paired against uh, for round four Volcanic Snake Eye FTK. I actually brought this deck profile very recently uh, with a different player, of course, from a different regional. So, you know, FTKs are never fun to play against. I did win Daryl, but I mega brick game one. I'm talking like set one tragedy, set one Brandon Red that's not even live at this point. Uh, so, I just got completely blown out. Game two, uh, again, give me a clock. I take it from there. Game three was actually pretty interesting. Uh, with one in Perm, I was able to at least save myself from being FTK'd. I did take a lot of burn damage though. Now, we're eventually in this like grind game state and I'm actually, I have the position uh, and availability to do the gimmick lock going second. The thing was, uh, earlier that turn, I had used the Mirror J nuke effect, uh, which cleared his princess off the field, which then now he was not fire locked and uh, I didn't know that he had a Magma Nut in hand that he was able to banish uh, my branded and red target that I was trying to go into the uh, gimmick lock with, which really, really sucked. So moving on to round five, we're actually paired against another friend from locals in Charlie. He was playing pure snake eye, uh, you know, pretty common theme. Game one, I game a clock him. Game two, it was kind of a slow paced grind with like a floodgate or something, but you know, he does manage to take it. I had no advantage there. And then game three, uh, again, game a clock, he had no interruption, so I take it easy there. Uh, next round six, I'm paired against Vanquish Soul. I lose Daryl. He does go first, but he opens too many floodgates and hand traps. Uh, game two, my hand wasn't even that great. I had some multiple duplicates, uh, but he starts with like a Vanquish Soul effect before I even do anything. So that meant my thrust was live. I go for uh, Feather Duster. I set uh, destroyed as two sets, one of which was Summon Limit, uh, which would have been uh, game ending right there. Uh, and then eventually I start with like an Albus uh, Summon, go into like Mirjay, and it was like a grind game. Again, eventually I gimmick lock going second as well. So I do take it there and then round seven i'm paired with another vanquish soul and speaking of vanquish soul actually steven santoli uh he did finish second place uh with vanquish soul at this regional so he does have a youtube channel now you should definitely check that out i'll link that down below 
Anyways, if I control again, I lose that roll again. I do lose game one in this instance. Uh, game two, I got shifted. I actually can't remember how I managed to still end up winning because my end board, I'm pretty sure it was just like a clem or something. It was really bad. <laughs> but game three, uh, he does go first again. I guess he didn't open well. He sets like two passes and he it ended up being an anti-spell fragrance though. So, you know, floodgates all around. Really hope that gets addressed. Uh, but, you know, he eventually gets to this point. He had like a Fenrir, but he also eventually goes for uh, Vanquish Soul and then Nightmare Phoenix to pop one of my sets, which he was actually about to snipe my Branded Fusion. Uh, luckily for me, his Phoenix was co-linked with the Rock, so I was able to Ash that effect, uh, in which case now uh, I was able to next turn Branded Fusion Super Poly and just go for game. And in the final round eight, I'm going against Ali, really cool guy. And so he was on Kashira. Luckily, I win that roll again. Uh, you know, gimmick lock, real easy right there. Game two, he ended on something like Appaloosa, Fenrir, Unicorn, Rebirth, as well as like the field spell. Uh, I actually top deck evenly for turn, which is crazy because I only play one, right? I do play three thrusts, but still. Uh, so I evenly everything away. He keeps the Appaloosa. Uh, and I just go fusion deployment, summon out Albus, I don't even bother with the effect, I just go super poly, get rid of the mirror, uh, Appaloosa for mirror jade, and I think I pitched like a tragedy, so I banished it with like my Serenir, and then you know, get a Luber, uh, you know, that's kind of game from there. So basically, after 8 rounds, I did finish 6 wins, 2 losses, you know, it's not great, uh, but it's solid. I did end up finishing 19th, uh, but I did already have my invite, but at the same time, I still really want to try my best every regional level event. Anyways, enough about me, my good friend Miguel, who of course was playing Hero that I lost to in round 1, as well as my good friend Tian, who's playing Labyrinth, you've seen him in my previous vlogs, he was on my 3v3 team. Uh, they were both 6 wins, 1 loss, and 1 tie, so let's just see how well they did in terms of standings. In 7th place, with 19 points, is Miguel! Yeah! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Six wins, one loss, one tie, is Hugh Nguyen. Let's go! 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 Let's go!